Hey there, Solid Rock Church family and friends. So glad you joined us tonight. We are going to talk about the subject of healing again. I know that we've been on that a lot, but you know, it's what the Holy Ghost keeps emphasizing to me. And so I want to keep talking to you about it. And I do have a book here. This book I've been talking to you about for a while. This is from Pastor Nancy Dufresne. It's called The Healer Divine. And uh, in, in this book, Pastor Nancy has taken time to search out the 19 healing testimonies, healings with testimonies, I call them, where uh, there's more information given about the healings. And it's a benefit to us. We can learn different things about the process of divine healing by reading these. You know, the Holy Ghost took time to write them out and tell us different situations. So there's 19. And if we study the 19, we come up with little keys and uh, insights into the healing process. And that's what we're working with on this broadcast is trying to help you with that. So this book is available from her or our bookstore. We have it here <coughs> if you'd like a copy, but it has all 19 in here. And we know there was many more healings than 19, but these are the ones that have a testimony or tell us more about it. So we've kind of studied a couple of them so far. I want to go back to one in Luke chapter 5. And I think the last broadcast that we had, we were on this too. And I want to just take a little bit more time. The Holy Ghost <coughs> keeps talking to me about this. Uh, situation. So this is the man. It's such a powerful, powerful example of healing. This is the man that was uh, paralyzed, and he couldn't actually get to the meeting. And so Jesus came uh, to his area, and he had four friends that actually brought him to the meeting. And so I want to, um, it's in Luke chapter 5. It's also in the Gospel of Mark, but we're going to read it in the Gospel of Luke to start with. And I want to just take a moment and read it to you again. Then I want to comment a little bit on, uh, I wrote down three different things that the Spirit of God had emphasized to me. Even though we've studied this one more, it just seems so strong to be able to, uh, so necessary to, 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 uh, to help you with this. So anyway, let's go back to look. Luke chapter 5, and <clears throat> verse 15, I'm going to read it out of the King James Bible. So much the more went a fame uh, abroad of him. And great multitudes came together, and I want you to recognize this, they came to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So they came with a purpose, they came to hear what he had to say, and they came to be healed. And so um, in verse 17, he withdrew from the, um, he withdrew, in verse 16, he withdrew into the wilderness. Verse 17, it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. So <clears throat> he had drawn a pretty good group of people around there. And I, like, I want you to make note of this last part. I like this last part of the verse. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So first off, um, we know that God's power is everywhere. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Where God is, his, his power is present. And, and uh, there was a purpose, the, Lord's, uh, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So I believe that purpose is connected to verse 15 because they came together to hear and to be healed. So when that purpose is there, when you come into a service, we've had services where we've declared them to be uh, healing services. <clears throat> and so when that happens, we announce it as a healing service in the United States or overseas. And we've had really a, a, a great success in our ministry. I've been saved uh, going on 50 years. So in the ministry, we started, uh, you know, we started in ministry right away when I got saved. And the pastor of the local church <clears throat> kind of put me to work immediately, must have seen a touch of God on my life and put me to work immediately. Then when I got married, my wife and I did different things in the church and we would always go out. We did a lot of street witnessing in those days. We'd go out on the street and talk to people about Christ and lead people to the Lord and pray with them. And we saw really a lot of uh, a lot of people saved, but then we saw a lot of miracles too of healings. We just minister to people right on the street. And then as uh, you know, when my ministry started to grow and we started doing more, then we would we eventually started preaching in other places and having crusades. And I remember going into uh, Haiti, the first time I did a missions trip, we went into the island of Haiti, and we did that in 1980, and then we went back again in 1981, and so uh, we did two mission trips into Haiti at that time, and, that, and when we were overseas there, then we 
course, preached and then laid hands on people and saw people get healed. <clears throat> but even up to that time, because I got saved in 1973, so that was seven years later, up to that time, we'd already been laying hands on people either in our area or in the church or when people would ask. And, and when that would happen, then there was a lot of, a lot of healings that took place. One of the first healings that I remember, I wasn't very uh, old in the Lord yet, and one of the elders in the church, one of the deacons and elders, was, was kind of put me and my wife under his wing, so to speak. And he asked me to go with him on a Saturday afternoon. I was working for my father at the time in the automobile garage, and I had to get time off, you know, but he asked me to go with him on a Saturday afternoon to a gentleman's house that was had a severe attack of kidney stones. He was out of work for a couple of days. I think he worked with this other gentleman. So I said, yeah, we'd go. And on the way over there, you know, he talked to me about a couple of things about healing. He talked to me about the anointing. He talked to me about what was going to happen. It was real interesting. He said, when we get there, you're going to find this gentleman laying on the couch, and he's going to be screaming in pain. <clears throat> and he said, you're going to also find that when we get in the door, uh, we're going to have him uh, stand up, or we're going to get him off the couch, and we're going to have him stand up. And he said, you're going to put your hands on his chest, and I'm going to put my hands on his back. And he said, then you're going to pray, and this is what you're going to say. He told me what to say. And he said, and this is what's going to happen. You're going to feel this anointing come into your hand, the power of God come into your hand. Now, this was a believer, and he was obviously believing for healing because he'd asked us to come. So it would be just the same as what was going on here in Luke, that there was a man that was, uh, this man in the Gospel of Luke that came. Um, he was paralyzed, as we'll see as we read on. But it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So when we got to this particular gentleman's house, he'd already been in faith, believing, so the power of the Lord was present to heal him there. And <clears throat> So when we got there, we opened the door. It was just like he said. He was screaming in pain, and we got him up off the couch, you know, and he didn't make him feel any better. And then I put my hand on his chest, and he put his hands on his back, and I prayed, and I declared healing. And when I did that, healing anointing came into my hand. I remember very distinctly, <clears throat> and of course, he was instantly healed. All of the kidney stones dissolved. And there was no more problem, and the pain left, and, and everything, just, just like that. And so that was my first experience outside of anything that we did in the church or anything that happened at the church altar, where we actually went somewhere, and I was involved in that process. So here in Luke, it says, The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So that means that God's presence was there, but also it was there in enough magnitude so that everybody there could have been healed. Well, it told us in verse 15 that they came to hear and to be healed. So that was them putting a demand on that anointing. And when they put a demand on it, guess what? It was there and ready to, to take care of them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them, all of them. Now, as we read on, um, let's read verse 18. The men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy, meaning he was paralyzed. And they sought means to bring him in, and they couldn't. And so when they could not by any means bring him in that way, they, they removed the roof off the roof of the house, verse 19, and they let him down on a stretcher. And uh, verse 20 says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, Unto him, man, your sins are forgiven thee. And, um, of course, the scribes and Pharisees got very angry. Now, I want you to, to realize in this whole biblical account of this healing, I want to make note of this. The power of the Lord was present to heal them, all of them. When we get all the way down to the end, um, Verse 25, it says, And immediately he rose up before them and, and took that couch that he laid on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they all glorified God, and they were filled with reverence or fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So in that whole biblical account, it only gives the, the Bible only talks about one person in that whole assembly that was so large it wouldn't fit, the, they couldn't fit in the building. And they had to take the roof off to let this guy in. And when they did, Jesus saw their faith in doing that, and of course, he was made completely whole. Uh, interesting, isn't it? Because you can go to a church service, and actually, the power of God is everywhere. So you can go to a church service, you can be in your car, you can be in the park down the, the street, you can be at your home, uh, you can go anywhere, and the power of the Lord is present <coughs> in all of those places. But not people don't get healed just going to the park, and they don't just get healed in their house unless there's something that uh, they do to access that power. Now, 
when I first got saved, I told you we went to that house shortly after I got saved, and we prayed for that guy, and he was healed. And then we, I saw people healed in church, and I uh, saw the pastor praying for people, and I saw people healed, and they would give their testimony what God did for them. But I really never thought that healing would take place outside of like two people going to this house on that purpose, that it ever could happen anywhere besides something um, probably private or in church. So it took me a while to realize that when the, the power of the Lord can be anywhere, because God is everywhere, but it's not, it's just like electricity. You know, electricity is everywhere, but it doesn't work unless someone puts a demand by running a switch to get that power flowing. And so um, it got to me with, uh, I worked in a large Ford dealer in Michigan for a number of years. I'd worked for a ministry first, and when my job at that ministry came to an end in Michigan, then I got a job at uh, needed to supply for my family. And so I ended up with, with a job back in an automobile dealership. I was a salesman in, a, in a, one of the third largest Ford dealers in Michigan. Uh, and I ran a, you know, as a manager and ran a crew and so on. But uh, I remember going into the service department with a particular lady. This happened more than once, but one particular incident. I remember a lady had come to buy a car, and I ended up having to help her. So we walked through the, the uh, amount of used cars. She didn't have a lot of money. We walked through the used cars trying to find one that would fit within her budget and would work for her. And it ended up that the one that she really wanted ended up being in the service department being repaired. So we went into the service department. And I remember going into the service department. Now there was uh, 130 employees in this dealership. So there's people, you know, it's a big shop and a lot of people working. And of course, in many of the shops, you know, there's pictures on the walls that are not, at that time, that were not uh, pleasing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the mechanic's toolbox had stuff in them, and in this particular dealership had stuff that was uh, not fit for eyes. So we walked in the midst of that, and there's music going on that's not godly, and there's uh, language that's not godly going on with the mechanics. And I walked right in the middle of that, and as we were walking through the shop, I felt prompted to uh, ask this lady if she'd like to receive Christ. And so right in the middle of the shop that day, as because we, we were talking, and you know, we'd been together for a while, uh, half hour or so as she's looking um, in the middle of the shop that day I stopped and we bowed our heads I grabbed her hand she had her daughter with her I grabbed her hand and I led them to the Lord and uh, right in the middle of all of that mess and as soon as I grabbed her hand and started to pray there was an anointing for healing that came on me and I'd recognized it from before you know many times in our ministry and so on and so then I asked her if there was a physical need and she had a physical problem and she asked if I would pray for that. So I did, again, right in the middle of the shop. And there was a tangible anointing there so that, that uh, she could be healed. Now, you could say, well, that was just for her. But the power of the Lord is present. When, when you access it like that, it's present and available to more. So in that particular incident, it really was available to everyone that was in the shop that day. All the different mechanics, you know, on both sides, the service manager and everything that was available to all of them if they'd have wanted it. Uh, they didn't know what I was doing. Some of them maybe did, some of them didn't. But if we would have made it offered to them, you know, it was available to them. Just like here in Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> the power of the Lord is present to heal them, but the Bible does not record that anybody else got healed except this one person. So I'm glad for the one person, but isn't it interesting, or don't you? doesn't it make you think about what could have been done different on uh, this particular account that maybe more people would have accessed it. Well, it would be up to them. Uh, Jesus already did everything he could do. God already did everything he was going to do or could do. And, and uh, so here was the one person. They did what they could do. And they were the ones that, that received and were the benefactor of the power of the Lord was present to heal. Jesus obviously was teaching on healing because that's what was available there to the people. <clears throat> one time um, I had a visitation from God in 03 where he came, uh, Jesus came into my bedroom and talked to me about the anointing for a little over an hour. It was um, uh, just a little over an hour, about an hour. And he came in and talked to me for, for that long a time. And one of the things he said, the anointing of God shows up for two different reasons. One, you preach on a subject and the anointing will show up to confirm that subject with signs following. So if I would preach on healing, the anointing will show up to confirm the word with signs following, meaning healing. If I would preach on uh, something else, uh, finances, and the anointing would show up to confirm finances and so on. 
So if Jesus is preaching on healing, they came to hear and to be healed. You know he was preaching on healing. He's already said what he preached in those messages uh, when he went. He always started out with Isaiah 60. You know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he's called me, and there's a tangible anointing. Uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, called him to heal. So that was always available in his services, and, and you see how many people were healed. So the number one thing I want to draw your attention to here again is that the power of the Lord is present everywhere, but you have to access it by using your faith. Jesus said it was their faith that made him whole. So you have to use your faith so that you can access the power of God to have it come to you and cause some effect in your, in your life. So um, it was available to everybody, but only one received. I have had meetings where, uh, you know, thousands of people, you call them forward, and some, and some will respond, sometimes many. You know, I've, I've laid hands on some meetings, over 1,000 people in a night. Uh, those are pretty interesting meetings. And in, the, in that one particular meeting I'm just thinking about, we had lots of miracles. We had a um, lady with cancer, and she was healed, and we had just all kinds of stuff happen. But um, not everybody in that meeting, and laying hands on over 1,000, I think there was eight or 10,000 in the meeting, and we only had about a thousand come forward. We had many people get saved, so not everybody responds. Even you responding means by faith you're you're trying to access what happened there. So this particular situation here, Luke chapter five, they responded to what the word being preached, and in responding he was healed. So it can happen to you, and I I get, um, you know, I'd like to see everybody healed in a meeting. I don't see that happen very often. I, I'm not sure I've ever seen it happen at all. Dad Hagen talks about a couple of meetings where everybody got healed. The Bible talks about meetings where Jesus said all of them got healed. I believe that we're headed in that direction with this move of God that we've got uh, happening right now, <clears throat> but I really haven't seen that much. So here's the situation with this particular person. The power of the Lord was present to heal. Only one person out of all of them, they couldn't even get in there, got healed. So um, it's up to the people. It's, I used to be, kind of beat myself up after, but it's really up to the people if they're going to put a demand on things. If they don't, then there's really nothing that I can do, uh, really nothing that anybody could do. So it's up to you. If you want healing in your body, really a lot of it is on your, your side. It's up to you. Dr. Dufresne used to talk about a God side and a man side. So a lot of that is on your side. How, how hungry are you or how determined are you that you want to see healing manifest in your body? So, um, power of the Lord present to heal. So you have to meet God's power with your faith. That's the second thing I wrote down. You have to meet God's power with faith. I can think of many times I've been in hospital rooms where people are very sick and I've had to uh, gone in there to lay hands on them and pray. Either I've been asked to come. I did work as a hospital chaplain in one of the churches I pastored. That was part of our deal for the community was we'd sign up to be, you know, like the chaplain at the hospital on certain days of the week. And on those days, you'd go in and just find anybody in the hospital that wanted to talk to a pastor. And that was a little different because sometimes you'd get in the rooms and people had no concept of divine healing. They really didn't want you there. They weren't really caring if you were there or not. And then I've gone where people have asked me. I had a man healed in the hospital one night where uh, God showed up and healed this guy. It wasn't me, but you understand what I'm saying. It happened in my life. And God uses people. So uh, healing very rarely takes place without God using someone, you <laughs> or someone else, to help you. Uh, you know, it doesn't just happen automatically. Some, there's faith somewhere on someone's part for healing to take place. But I got a phone call. I was pastoring in Michigan. I got a phone call early one morning, about 4 in the morning. And it was a lady that attended our church. She had a grandson that was old enough to be working at a truck stop uh, by Detroit on Interstate 94. And as he was working, he had to change tires on a big semi-truck. And it was um, the type of rim where half the rim you had to take off to get the tire off. And they call them a split rim. They have a big metal band that goes around the outside of the tire to hold everything together. And this guy was taking this thing off, and they're under pressure, and he was taking it off. And the split rim came loose and hit him right about uh, between his eyes, right here or right down in his nose somewhere. And when it hit him, it clipped the top of his head open, and his brain was exposed. And, of course, they rush him to the hospital, and 
they call the grandma. He was living with grandma, and they call grandma, and, and uh, you know, he's going to die. He's not going to make it through the night. So she calls me and asks me to go to the hospital. <clears throat> we had to drive a ways. So I said, yeah, we got up, got dressed, and drove there. And when we came, we found him in ICU, and he was obviously not doing very well. So uh, I asked the doctor if we could go in and pray for him. We had to put on the gowns and stuff, my wife and I, and went in there. And, you know, he was in a coma, but <clears throat> it was interesting what I did, uh, being led by the Holy Ghost. His, his soul was important to me. Healing is always important, but I'm really concerned about people making heaven. So I uh, grabbed his hand, and I, I called him by name, and I said, um, I know that you physically cannot hear me, but I know your spirit man hears me. And so uh, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And then I said, I'm going to give you space to answer. And when you answer, then, uh, then you know, you answer affirmatively, you're going to be born again and make heaven your home. In case you don't get healed, you know, you're, you're facing eternity right here. The doctors say you're not going to make it. So I did that. I held his hand and I said, now, uh, you know, I invite Jesus in my heart. And then I waited a moment to, uh, for him to respond. And then I said, thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus. And I believe he is the son of God, and I believe he died and rose again from the dead for me, just like the Bible says, you know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved. So I just went through that Romans 10, 9 and 10 with him. And in the process of that, I was just holding his hand, and uh, we got done with that. Then I declared healing over his body, and uh, my wife and I went home. And later that day, uh, towards the evening, I checked back with the hospital and see if, he'd, if he was still around, and he was. So we went back again. I think I went back that night uh, and prayed again, and then we went back the next morning. And when I went the next morning, <clears throat> uh, or the next, not the next morning, but the morning after that, so he'd been there a couple days already, and he, he hadn't died. They thought that was phenomenal. He was actually awake, and I went in the room and talked to him, called him by name, and I said, told him who I was, and he said, I know you. And, uh, and I said, I came and prayed with you <clears throat> the other day when you came in here. He said, I know. And I said, I led you in a sinner's prayer, and you accepted Christ. He said, I did. And so he knew all that stuff, even though he was in a coma. See, his spirit man knew. And so he knew all of that. And then, uh, of course, we declared healing over him again. And, you know, God healed his physical body so that when he got done, he came to the church I was pastoring and testified and told what happened. My son and I were talking about it the other day. It was just still an amazing thing to my son. He was quite a bit younger then. And, uh, but that he came and testified how God healed him, how I came and talked to him, and how he knew it, how he accepted Christ, and so on. It was just a great testimony. But here the power of the Lord was present to heal in that hospital room, even though uh, I had to access it by my faith. You know, when you look at that guy, you're not thinking that God's going to heal him. You're thinking he's going to be dead in just a few minutes. So all of those things that I did in there is I accessed the power of God that was present by my faith, and it manifested in his body. You can do the same thing. You can access the power of God that's present in your home. You can access the power of God that's present, you know, in your car. I can't even tell you how many times I've accessed the power of God that's present in my car or in my house or in my bedroom, you know, or uh, at work or in the church or anything, you know, any of those places. God is everywhere, and your faith will access the power of God. Then you keep the faith going to keep the power flowing, see? And so, just like in this situation here, I just wanted to take some time today. I guess I've taken most of our time, but I want to take some time and talk about this again and encourage you that healing is available everywhere. It's not just available at church. It's available everywhere. And you can access the healing power of God at your home, at work, uh, you know, in your bedroom at night. You can start to declare God's word about healing. Psalms 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed him. You can declare the healing power of God right where you are, right now. Uh, you know, if you're driving or something, don't get goofy. But uh, you can access that. And when you do, the he God will show up because he always responds to faith, just like he did here in this particular story. So, amen. The power of God is present to heal everywhere. But you have to do something to access that power. Amen. You know, I'm going to receive a Sunday night offering. And so if you're watching and listening and you want to participate, the text to give number is 612-431-1420. If you're part of our church and you uh, want to give, then I encourage you to do that. If you're not part of our church and you feel prompted to give, listen, obey the promptings of the Holy Ghost and just go ahead uh, because the Spirit of God is prompting you to give. Remember, the devil will never tell you to give. He'll just tell you to keep because he's a thief. 
So I'm going to pray for you, Father. I pray for this group of people tonight that are watching. And I declare your power of God is present to heal right where they are. And so I release that healing anointing where they are. And I declare from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet that healing will manifest in their body. In the name of Jesus, that healing will manifest in their body. Lord, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. In Jesus' name. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight or today whenever you're watching this. Tell you how much I appreciate you and how much I appreciate you watching. And we're going to keep on the healing, the subject of healing. We have some other things we're going to cover. I'm not going to just spend the rest of our time always in Luke chapter 5. But I'll tell you, it just was so important to me to be able and to the Holy Ghost to be able to encourage you. You access the power of God. You access the power of God. It'll help you. And you can access it wherever you are. It's everywhere. God is omnipresent. But you have to access it by using your faith. So Lord bless you. Have a great night. And we'll see you Tuesday night.